What's up guys, this is Black Scout Survival and today I'm going to be going over bug out clothing. What I recommend, what I use, and a lot of this is going to be environmentally dependent. Like if you live in Antarctica, you may want to have something different than what I'm using. You know what I mean? Your natural foliage or environment may dictate what kind of colors you use and what type of system you use. But uh, I try to, I'm going to try to go over a few different environments that I think you know, will help most of you out in the U.S. unless you live in the desert or some very cold region. But let's go ahead and get started. And I'm first going to get, get started about footwear. have two pairs of boots here. This is a Oakley Assault boot, and it's a, a desert-style boot. And this is good because it has high ankle support, and the soles have good Vibram soles, and you can maneuver very well. Here I have... You know, these are not waterproof because they're desert boots, but this is a Loa and this is a Gore-Tex style hiking boot. Has good ankle support and Gore-Tex obviously so you don't get wet. And then I'm wearing some Marine Corps Issue Jungle Rough Side Out boots and this jungle boot is made to drain water and it has a molded sole to the boot itself. This is good for high, you know, humid or wet environments like jungle obviously so you know you need to have a few different boots to for a few different situations or if you live in an environment and you don't plan on leaving that environment there's something built for that area in my opinion your footwear and your survival knife should be where the majority of your money goes to because you know your feet are, can put you down then let's just talk about socks real quick I have you know some wicking socks right here and you can put these on under your like wool socks or whatever or you can wear them in a, a hot environment like with the uh, jungle boots and just wear these themselves but some kind of wicking sock and then some kind of wool sock wool is unbelievable whenever i was in the uh montana we, we went to montana snowmobile and i, I go uh, every so often and i put on these wool socks my feet never got cold even in 40 below zero weather all right so let's now talk about rain gear and this is a military poncho. You can go with a military poncho because they're cheap. However, I don't really like camouflage gear because I can't blend in and I'll kind of talk about that in a second. But it's a cheap option. You can find it in a lot of places. There's also the Frog Togs, which is a uh, manufacturer that makes some very lightweight rain suits and ponchos and stuff. And they have a poncho for about 12 bucks that you can get in some kind of natural colors like a tan or brown. And that will be just as good. You can also get, again, this is camouflage, but you can get a military Gore-Tex for fairly uh, reasonable price. And these things are tough. They'll last forever, you know. And I used them for a long time in the military, and it's a good piece of trusted gear. But it is heavy and bulky, and it may be more than what you need for your area. What I use is... I get something like from these mountaineering, you'll notice a lot of my stuff is mountaineering gear style stuff because for the civilian market because they have the best technology. They spend a lot of money in R&D and make the best type of uh, material out of the best type of materials you can find. But this is a mountain hardware and you can get them most of the time in, you know, subdued colors. And this is a mountain hardware, olive drab. I think this one's color is called Canteen. Very lightweight, very packable. You know, and it cuts the wind off of you. I was uh, in a cold place the other week. I flew up to uh, up north, and this is the only jacket I brought, and it kept me warm even still. And a lot of this stuff has technology that will wick your sweat and moisture away from you. Along with that, I have some Columbia packable rain pants, and you can put these on over your pants. They have uh, openings that can you can get into your main pockets. So this is something good to have as well. And they pack up small, won't take up much room in your pack. Let's now go on with some more outer layers. Here I have two things, or I'm sorry, mid layers, I should say. This is just a fleece, and this is a subdued color. You can get these from Condor or a lot of other manufacturers. But just a over fleece that you can put over your shirts or whatnot and wear under your outer shell. You can also get military surplus gear like this sweater right here this is a 100 percent wool military sweater for like you can get these for like 10 bucks so it's a good thing to have cheap 
you know, don't cost much money and they're subdued color. So they'll blend into your environment. Because in a bug out situation, more than likely you're not wanting to be seen or found because other people are in the same situation as you and they may be criminal opportunists or may just want your stuff and they attack you. So you want colors that can blend in, but the reason why I don't really like camouflage is because it looks threatening. This kind of stuff will not look threatening. It will just look like I have a bad sense of fashion. You know what I mean? I can blend into the uh, outdoor areas here, you know, out here in the wilderness, but I can also blend in in a regular world. And this kind of stuff, trust me, I can get very camouflaged in. I was filming something the other week and I had to get a completely like a, a unseen like a sniper with this gear and I did and, and the camera crew lost me so but I like these button-down type shirts like this one right here this is a 511 it has hidden pockets I have a few of these this is a lightweight type and it has the flap on the back with the ventilation because your back normally gets hot especially when you're wearing a pack so it has lots of pockets where I can put stuff and layer my kit on my person so I can have my survival items all over my person and not just in one pocket uh, so I like that type of thinking and I like the hidden pockets but I also have like a LL Bean style you know just a field shirt that's a little bit thicker here's another 511 this is a cotton one that's a little bit thicker than this one this is a wicking you know uh, and dries very quickly but same type of design but it's just an OD green then this is a triple lock design field shirt and it's essentially almost the same thing as these these that I have on it has nice pockets the sleeves roll up buttons can be easily fixed because these are 550 cords uh, here it also has a inside hidden pocket you can hide your passport or money or whatever documents or you know lock picks or handcuff keys and you know this I think it's called an overland field shirt but you know I'll wear this when I go overseas travel overseas hide my cash and my passport in this shirt but again these are you know subdued colors can blend in Going along with shirts, you're going to want something, you know, some long sleeve stuff that will keep you warm, you know, subdued colors. And I like browns, tans, green, you know, OD greens and uh, stuff like that. Here's a coyote brown. This is a military style wicking shirt. I like wicking base layers. You know, if, I, if I'm on the move like I probably would be in a bug out situation, I'm going to be getting hot and I'm going to want to, you know, shed that water off my body. And I like grays too as well with the subdued colors. Grays work well in all environments. And this is just a, another Under Armour. I like Under Armour, works well. And in a colder environment, I'll wear these Under Armour, you know, cold gear like this, wicking, very warm stuff. And this is uh, the pants to, to this, but these are, you know, subdued colors. God forbid I wind up in only this, but if I, if I do, I can still blend in. But Wicking keeps you very and it keeps you very warm. I wear these in Montana again, like 40 below zero, just fine, no problems. But you want some kind of wicking base layer for cold and hot and or humid environments. The next thing we'll get to is pants. I've got two styles here, and you see I got gray pants on. I wear those a lot, and because they do blend in quite well. These are 511s, and I have another pair of 511 grays as well, but. You know, they got a good cut. They don't have cargo pockets and crazy stuff all over them. It's a good jean cut, but has hidden pockets. Again, I like these hidden pockets. And get the jean cuts. I really don't like cargo pockets because sometimes that can give you, give off that you may be carrying more stuff or whatever. You know, or if you do stuff, a lot of stuff in your pants. That's just my preference. If you like cargo pockets, wear them. Now these are something by Mountain Khakis and it does have one cargo pocket on one side. Mountain Khakis, these are, you know, uh, the type of material that dries very quickly but you know and this is something like granddad would wear but they're good to have it's the type of zip off pants they zip off in the short especially in my environment where it can get very hot you're going to want to you know take those off but then again when the sun starts going down or if you start getting sunburned it will protect you from the sun you know pants long pants and long shirts will protect you from the sun but it will also protect you from insects you know especially in my environment subtropical region we have very uh, high mosquito population and you know, West Nile virus and all that kind of crazy stuff. But again, you know, have some regular pants and have some pants that convert if you live in a hot environment like me. If you live in a, you know, very cold environment, you may want some overall type bibs that are uh, Gore-Tex or, you know, waterproof. So, but these will dry quick. And again, well, let me go back on the shirts. Like, you know, these are long sleeve shirts. I'll wear them in summertime, no problems. But it's one of those things that if I get real 
hot, I can take off my base layer, dip this in water, and put it on, and the breeze is gonna keep me cool. So, works quite well. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get into gloves. You know, your hands are something that you need to protect. I hear a lot of tough guys talking about, oh, you know, don't wear gloves, this and that. My hands, I swear, are like sandpaper. I work out with, without gloves on. I, I, I never used gro gloves growing up, so my hands are rough. But I still wear gloves because I want to keep it protected. Some kind of injury, some minor can turn into a major and put you down in a survival situation or a bug out situation. So don't be too tough to wear gloves is what I'm getting to. So I have two types here, you know, obviously two different types of colors that can blend in in any kind of environment, truly. But these are mechanics. These are what I like. They're cheap and they perform very well. So something, something good to have. Just invest in a, a high quality pair of gloves, you know. Then we're going to go to headwear. And I say I don't like camouflage. I got a camouflage hat here, but and I'll, I'll go into why. But I don't like camouflage because I wore it for so long in the military. Uh, when I wear it, I think of it as work now, so I don't like it. I like to wear stuff that's just like subdued. You know what I mean? And can blend in in an urban situation, so I can go gray man if need be. So that's that's another reason why I say that. But anyhow, this hat I would never wear in an urban environment. But you want to have some type of sun hat if you live in an environment like me. It'll keep the uh, sun off your you know, neck and out of your eyes, but this uh, boonie style hat like this will also blend in if you need to go you know, very stealthy. So I like to have something like this in my pack. Then I just have two subdued colored type hats, you know, a tan and a green, you know, depending on what environment. I may come into an area that's a field with dry, very dry grass. I may want to switch to something like this to blend in better. And then, you know, again, I, I said I like these mountaineering style companies because they provide a lot of high quality, you know, very, cutting edge gear to the civilian market and you can get subdued colors like this one here but this is north face it uh, has a fleece lining around the ears too and this thing is extremely warm so that's headwear now these right here are not essential but you know shamogs i'm sorry are very popular and you can wear them you know cover your head uh, use a sling you can use it for a thousand different things but this does give off kind of tactical look. But again, just tuck it in your pack if you're gonna go into an urban environment. If not, it can keep you cool, you know, dipping in water, or you can use it to try to camouflage yourself. So that's something good to have too. Now, even better than that, I love this thing. This is called a sniper veil. And this is what we use in the military to hide with without using a full on ghillie suit. And this thing is phenomenal. You can use it as a scarf, like I do a lot of times. You can just wrap it around your neck like a scarf. You can cover it on your head like a hood, or you can just drape it across your body just to disappear. And it's subdued colors, works very well, and you can use it for a net if need be, or just to carry, you know, gear with. So something good to have. All right, so next thing I'm gonna talk about is my packs. And again, I talk about these mountaineering companies. You know, this is my longer term survival pack here. Uh, like if I had to go beyond a 72 hour period and this is my smaller type 3 day 72 hour bag but these are mo both made by Kelsey subdued colors this is a map quest it's a tactical type but this is a actual civilian type called a red cloud 90 90 liter pack and it's subdued color so I can go cash it somewhere out in the wilderness and if, if I need to go and patrol with a smaller pack but again mountaineering companies they make a lot more comfortable gear than military style rucksacks or stuff packs with molly and all kinds of crazy stuff all over it but that's what i use and you know th th this kind of gear will keep you blend you know help you blend in in a uh, urban and a wilderness environment so you want to have things that you can lay on your body because layering clothing is how you regulate your body's temperature so just you know try to make it appropriate to your environment and hopefully this helps if you have any comments or questions drop them in the box below and uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.